Hello, hello. Getting ready for yet another Kinkmas presentation. Waiting for all the notifications to go out. Of course. Hello, hello, hello. Come on into the chat. Let me know you're here and we will get started talking about dating and connecting online. Yay. Ah, hello, Cobalt. Always a pleasure. Just made myself a nice cup of tea. Okay, going to go ahead and start my introduction, get that out of the way. Hello, Celine. Hello, Ali. Pleasure to see you. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Kinkmas. For those of you who are just tuning in or who don't know me yet, I'm Nookie. I'm the founder of datingkinky.com. I am also Miss Claus. Really? That's my name, Heather Claus. I'm a hedonistic, dominant, cuckoldress pimptress who is polyamorous and monoromantic. And in my daily life, I live an existence beyond what I ever could have imagined uh, when I was younger. And in addition to that, in addition to all the fucking fantastic people and love and um, adventures I have in my life, I have the opportunity to spend my time writing books, teaching classes, and hosting workshops about love, sex, romance, and of course, kink for people of all genders, relationship statuses, orientations, and more. And right now, I'm going to talk about something that really has launched this whole datingkinky.com, Dating Kinky Messenger app journey. And that is how to connect online, um, especially as a kinky person, a non-monogamous person, uh, somebody who is interested in alternative lifestyles. And uh, this is something I have a lot of experience in. Excuse me. So I have been online since 2004. No, I just shaved 10 years off. I have been online since 1994. Yeah, 1994. I had a Performa 640, 634, 640 CD. Um, and I got online with an AOL CD. And shortly thereafter, I got online with a CompuServe CD and then a um, Prodigy.net CD. Um, these were the days when CompuServe was like 107382.4476 at CompuServe.net. That was your email address. Um, but the great thing about the internet in those days and you know, moving forward to now is that there were ways for um, like-minded people to connect. There were AOL boards, there were Prodigy forums, there were CompuServe.net forums, there was the alt.net, there were bulletin boards. Um, there were eventually, and I helped build some of these, communities. Um, and then there were dating sites. Um, remember the old Yahoo personals, anyone? Anyone? Uh, yeah, Yahoo personals came around. Um, we had color space that then became color me, or was it color me that then became color space? I don't even remember that now, but I did do, uh, work for them as a volunteer. Um, I also did some consultation work for them. Oh yes. Geosities. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then we moved into, you know, the days of, uh, alt.com, right? And um, 
FetLife came about. I've been on FetLife since its first year. I'm like member 50,500 and something. Um, what else? I've been online for a long time. I have helped to build communities. When Yahoo 360 went down, I actually built uh, a BDSM kink community for a group of people who had been very active on Yahoo 360 and uh, gave that to them for their writing and their engagement and so on and so forth. Um, I have volunteered on dating sites as a moderator, as um, an admin. I have done consultation on sites. And eventually, as you probably know, I actually created Dating Kinky. And I'm in the process of hopefully building the best damn dating site for kinky people or non-traditional relationships ever and uh, working on that. So I feel like I have some valid thoughts to share. Now, some of these thoughts, many of these thoughts are actually going to be coming directly from the book I wrote, Dating Kinky. Um, but this is a slightly different format and it's intended to not only cover dating, but also to cover connecting because not only are we trying to date online, but many of us are finding ourselves lost in a sea of communities, Facebook communities for kink, for non-monogamy, for um, breast cancer awareness, for uh, hedgehog racing, for collecting uh, thimbles, whatever it is, right? Um, Discord servers, we have here in my local area, like, 20 or 30 discord servers some of them are private some of them are semi-public and encourage new people to join and uh, connect with people i personally run a little server that's uh, i think it's over 800 strong with over 650 active members right now um that is all about people who want who people kinky people who want to meet actually meet other kinky people in the triangle area. Yes, that was a truck going by. Um, and in building communities, in creating websites, in creating a dating app, in um, running a community. I also run a local uh, community specifically for hosts and organizers that run events in my area. Um, all of this experience leads me to be very, very aware of the kinds of things that get reported as far as behavior goes, um, the kinds of things that are often mistakes, um, not, they're not harmful necessarily a lot of the times, um, but they're also not good right? And they don't help people connect. So what we're talking about today is in all of these things, dating apps, communities like Fat Life, Discord servers, uh, Facebook communities, wherever you happen to find yourself, how do you make sure that you stand out from the crowd? How do you do it? Because there are literally hundreds of thousands of people out there who want to connect. So, Cobalt says, awkward antics and uncouth charades? Yes, absolutely. And you know what? That's actually true in some cases, right? In some cases, awkward antics and uncouth charades are perfect. It's a matter of know your audience, read the room. <laughs> but there's a few basics I'd like to start with beforehand. Uh, Cosmopolite says, I like your beret. And then in answer to the question, you wear a beret, which is also potentially true, right? Um, another thing that 
gives me a unique perspective on all of this is that uh, back in the early 2000s, um, I spent a lot of my time as a hobby of sorts, uh, focusing in on learning as much as I could about pickup artists. And I joined the community and I was actually a spokesperson for several people. Um, and I got a chance to see the good, the bad, the ugly, and um, the really fantastic. And I learned a lot from them about techniques that have worked in order to meet their targets, which is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about seeing people and using them as target practice to get what you want, but in genuine connecting. However, in speaking to the idea of awkward antics, uncouth charades, and wearing a beret, the reason these things work to help you stand out from a crowd is called peacocking. The key is not to take it too far as to make yourself utterly ridiculous, unlikable, or um, make yourself somebody that people can't be around, uncomfortable, right? Genuine authenticity is the key. And I'm sure you've heard this before, right? You want to stand out? Just be yourself. And then you're yourself and they're like, oh, oh no, no, not like that. Which I suppose is probably pretty confusing. But we're going to talk about the four, well, kind of five most important things when it comes to standing out online and why these matter. And feel free to ask your questions because I am here to answer your questions and to help you connect online. So the four things that matter most are number one, Number one is always going to be number one, no matter where you are, no matter how you connect, whether it's a dating site or whatever, number one is always going to be your biggest priority when it comes to connecting with people. And that is your attitude. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. I'm going to fill these all out, but I'm going to start there. Your attitude. Number two, your profile. If you have one, your profile is critically important and what you put into that profile. And that is partially so important because it, what? It conveys your attitude and it tells people a little bit more about who you are. It shares parts of yourself with them, right? Three. The first message, when you're connecting with somebody online, especially through like a dating site or FetLife, the first message you send makes a huge difference, whether you are initiating the conversation or whether you are responding to the initiation, it makes a difference. But especially, especially, especially when you are initiating a conversation, a cold call, so to speak. And then number four, conversational skills. Um, oh, and so the first message does what? It conveys an attitude and it introduces you in some minor way that might induce people to either continue the conversation with you or to go look at your profile. As uh, Stephanie says, huh, actually fill it out. Yeah, critical. Hi, Stephanie, good to see you. So. Four, conversational skills. Like in a community, having a profile like on FetLife, which is primarily a community, isn't really going to get you anywhere. So conversational skills are going to matter. Same thing on a Discord, right? Like in the Discord that I run, we um, ask everyone to create an introduction when they join the server and we don't let them into the main part of the server until 
they've filled out an introduction and included a link to their FetLife profile, for example. Um, so we can, as members of that community, look somebody up, go check out their FetLife profile, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In the Discord, though, the primary key is going to be attitude and then conversational skills. Right. And then the number five, which is actually kind of a part of number two and number four, the profile and the conversational skills is photos. Um, and photos are the least important for most people who are looking to make a connection, but they are still critically important in several um, key ways. So we're going to discuss those and we're going to discuss how they are part of a good profile or how they are part of good conversational skills when you're in specifically a community um, like, for example, my mingler, where you might have an NSFW fun and flirty channel where people are sharing explicit photos with each other. How do you jump in and share those photos without overdoing it and making sure that you're a part of the conversation versus bombarding people with, I don't know, your junk or whatever it is. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Let's see. Cobalt says, I think I've stood out quite a bit, but in the past in not great ways. So how do you reduce the wrong kind of noticing? Oh, believe me. We're going to talk about that. And uh, Cosmopolite says, oh, dead fish photos. Have you seen uh, the photos that have been going around social media where somebody decided, a woman or a femme-bodied person, decided to uh, pose with her toys in the same way uh, that people often pose with dead fish? So, like, they're standing there, like, holding up a double-ended dong, like, you know, or, um, like, the, the, the butt plugs, Right. Very excited. Yes, yes, yes. Stephanie says, oh my God, I saw it with the dildos. Yeah, pretty hilarious. Um, and it's funny because I've actually seen people responding just like this, like it's hilarious. Um, and I've seen people responding with, oh, that woman needs more class. Like who would do that? Blah, 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 blah. So to me, this takes us back to the most important aspect of connecting online. And that is your attitude, your authenticity, right? You want to share who you are and how you feel about connection, right? With other people in such a way so that they receive it and they either want to connect with you or they deselect from connecting with you. And deselecting from connecting with you is just as critical as the people who choose to connect with you. Cosmopolite says, that woman will be able to tell who has a good sense of humor like her and who doesn't. Exactly. Or let's not even, let's take out the good. Let's take out the value judgment there and says, they will be able to tell who has a sense of humor like them and who doesn't. Right? Simple. Who is going to appreciate that kind of humor and who doesn't? So for example, um, when I was developing my Take No Shit Boundaries class, um, I posted some links for some people to take a look at. And somebody said, oh, I would never take a boundaries class or any kind of class that had such a bad word in it. And I said, thank you so much. You're not my target market. Because I am who I am. And if somebody's going to be put off or offended by the word shit in a take no shit boundaries workshop, they are not going to fit well with who I am as a person, right? Not only because I curse, 
but because of the types of topics that I'm going to be discussing. If you're uncomfortable with a word when we're talking about uh, trauma, right, and kink and sexuality and non-monogamy, that's going to be a challenge for you. And the same thing is true when it comes to attitude in standing out from the crowd on dating and community apps, right? So attitude. And one of the biggest things I will say about attitude, especially, especially if you're really wanting to connect, is don't just connect with people you want to bone because that comes through super clearly and it colors everything you do. If all you do is connect with people because they make your bits tingle, and by connect, that's connect with people because they make your bits tingle. You are going to be making your connection journey a thousand times more difficult for yourself. Because some people don't photograph well, some people don't, um, won't present online in a way that you obviously say, ooh, I want to do that. And some people, for example, like me, are super connectors. But when you approach me, like all you want to do is get in my pants, even if I were potentially interested in you, I would say no. And that would be the end of that. And you wouldn't have the opportunity to either, A, get in my pants, or B, for me to get to know you and say, you know what? I know somebody you need to meet in your area. Right? It's important to be able to make those connections. Hey, Roger, good to see you. Don't think I'd ever try to date online. It's way too easy to fake a profile. Maybe it's just me. I think I'm suspicious of others' motives. You are. I mean, in all the conversations that we've had, one thing that absolutely comes through from you, Roger, is that you are very suspicious of people's motives. And that's okay. I mean, with what you've been through, it's valid. However, there's a lot of opportunities online. And you know what you're doing right here, right here in this YouTube chat, you're connecting. It doesn't mean you have to be dating online. This is connecting. This is growing yourself. This is making genuine conversation with other humans. It's all part of this, right? And that can grow to be more. And that's a key point. Again, not just connecting with people that you might want to bone or you might want to date, but connecting about topics you're interested in, about things you want to learn more about, through conversation. I'll tell you a secret. I run a kinky dating site. I didn't meet my partner, my primary partner, the person that I live with, my nesting partner, the love of my life, the he who hangs the sun, moon, and stars. I did not meet him online. But my online journey took me to him. Here's how it went. Um, I was recently split up from my ex-husband. I had recently gone through a year of like being completely and totally um, hermited. And I was coming out of my shell and I'd been chatting with some people online and I went to Yahoo Personals and I saw a group there that was local to me. And I sent a note that because the group said, if you want to meet, <clears throat> we are all about getting together in person, send us an introduction, whatever. So I sent a note like, hey, da -da 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 -da, this is me, blah, 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 blah. 
and this was early in the morning, like six o'clock in the morning or something like that. And I got a message back in like 12 minutes that said, hey, Nookie, we'd love to meet you. How would you like to come to Christmas dinner tomorrow? Yep. Yahoo personals, Yahoo groups, Christmas dinner. Um, went to Christmas dinner, ended up becoming a part of a very nice little community there. Met somebody there who then introduced me to an online group called Female Artists of Domination. Um, it was just another little Yahoo group and they were two hours away. So I joined that. And then I went there with a friend of mine and I really liked it. And I went back a couple of more times and I ended up becoming a semi-regular. So I was driving two hours to go to this event and two hours to come back. And I was making friends there and I was connecting with people. And then one evening, I was there and so was he. It was his first and only event in a decade, right? And I was there and so was he, and we met. If I had not been there, if I had not connected with that group online, if I had not met that person who introduced me to that group online, if I had not responded to that group that was local to me, if I had not gone looking to connect with people that were local to me, I would not have made it to that event. And I might not have ever met him. Online is a tool. It's not the be all end all. And I'm somebody who runs a dating app. It is not the be all end all. My goal for all of you who are interested in this sort of thing is to teach you how to use online apps, communities, whatever, to get offline and connect with people. And then in some cases, like for example, with our Discord community, they meet maybe online, maybe offline, and then they keep the connection going and get to know each other better online in between offline events, right? It is a tool for our busy lives, right? Okay. Hello, Sabya Sachi. Good to see you. Not ready to date, want to reconnect with some friends and hopefully meet new ones too. There you go, right? Uh, definitely in online dating, there's a concern about fake profiles. There is. And yet, here's what I'll tell you about fake profiles. Fake profiles can only harm you by wasting your time if you have good boundaries. That's it. And when it comes to wasting your time, only engage with somebody who makes you feel good while you're spending time with them online, right? I knew somebody, uh, my ex-partner and I, we knew somebody online. Um, he was very enamored of her, more power to him. I felt like she was not who she said she was for various reasons. I chose to set my boundaries. I chose not to engage. And um, nearly six months later, found out she was absolutely not who she said she was. She was somebody entirely different. Um, did not hurt me because my boundaries were, I'm going to choose not to engage with this person because I can't verify them, right? Other people did not set boundaries like that. And they found themselves more and more involved in this person's online saga and didn't work. So again, attitude. What are you willing to do and what are you not willing to do to engage online? And engage with people authentically, engage with people genuinely, right? And if you're planning on doing that, it will show through in how you're connecting. I've met a lot of really cool people online over the years. It's also a great way to practice boundaries, practice social skills, etc. Ding! You can learn so much by practicing who you want to be online. 
Now, that's one of the things that I've been talking about in the Take No Shit Boundaries course, practice. And online is a great low stakes way to practice your boundaries. Huge, huge. And Ali says, this is where the importance of communication to build a community come in, vetting profiles through your community. Absolutely. And I will also say that I very rarely, for me, I very rarely date within my community. Um, the community, it's, I, I love my community. I love growing it. Um, I tend to find people that I date on um, non-kinky sites or people that are a little bit outside of the community um, who are not so much involved in the community. And then I often bring them in the community and, you know, set them up and there they go. Yay. Um, so also understand that having good boundaries and strengthening your personal intuition will help you if you can't vet. Um, also understand that sometimes what the community says about a person and what you feel about a person can be radically different things. I tend to trust my gut over most other people. So for that. Cobalt, I learned to accept more of myself by meeting people on Twitter with things in common and knowing I saw them as worthy and lovable. There you go. Attitude makes a huge difference. If you are online simply to feed your spank bank, that's gonna come across in what you do, right? Stephanie says, I would definitely not really date people where I live. Ooh. Okay, so the profile. In the Dating Kinky book that I wrote, um, I shared what I call the eight commandments of dating profiles. The eight commandments of dating profiles. And I've actually turned this into a workshop. And it's going to be a free workshop available to every member of Dating Kinky, paid plus members and free members. Um, and we are hoping to get that released this month as uh, one of our gifts to all of our members, because I believe that running a kinky dating site, that offering a workshop on building a kinky dating profile is a nice thing to do. So let's talk <laughs> about the eight commandments of dating profiles, right? The first one. And this one always makes me laugh. Thou shalt not use an obnoxious member name. So fun story. A submissive man that I know and uh, that I hung out with years and years and years ago, his username, his member name was her wrist rider. I'm going to type that in so you can see exactly what that looks like. Yeah, there we go. Her wrist rider. And we would be at munches together and chit chatting and connecting with people and so on and so forth. And, you know, they'd be like, you know, hi, I'm Sephora. Hey, I'm Phaedra. Hi, I'm Nookie. And then um, everybody would turn to look at him and I'd be like, yes, do tell us. What's your name? Mm. What was that? Hi, I'm her wrist rider. Wow. So the key to a name like that is that, yes, it does say one thing. He does enjoy fishing, right? Um, it does not 
give him much room for anything else about his personality, right? And that's a challenge. So I've seen other ones like hot hung guy for you, right? I can go for hours, light your fire three, um, fun liquor, now chose the best, pussy monster, come in your face, ass in air. Choose a name that suits you and not one that you're going to be embarrassed to admit to in public. Not a name that if you were to meet your potential future boopsie, you will not be embarrassed by. Also, understand that when people are looking at your profile online or reading your first message and all they see is the name ass in air, they're going to think that that's all you have to offer. And it may be, but that goes along with your attitude, right? If that's all you have to offer, then you are narrowing your market because you're not actually trying to connect. And in that case, it might be easier for you to just pay a pro, right? Commandment the second. Pick thy photos with care. Photos are an overall part of the profile. And there are two aspects to photos that are important. What they look like and how private they are. So let's start with privacy. If you are not out, photos that don't show your face or don't show your full face are important. So for example, this might be a photo I would share, right? To maintain my anonymity. Although anybody who knows me would recognize my hair, right? Um, photos with distinctive tattoos, right? Um, it's important that you understand how private you want to be when you start sharing photos, even on vanilla dating sites, right? And then there's what's in the photos. <laughs> As Stephanie says, hashtag dead creatures. So let's be fair on um, meathunters.com. I'm assuming there's a meathunters.com. Um, whether it's M-E-E-T or M-E-A-T hunters.com, I don't know. But dead creatures, that's going to be a turnoff for some, and it's going to be perfect for very specific circumstances, right? It's not about what you can't do. It's about how are people going to view what you do within the situation that you're putting that information out there, right? And if all you have is like four pictures of like you holding up gigantic fish, then somebody's going to think, well, all they really do is fish. They don't have any other interests. They don't dress up and they don't go out on a date. You know, they don't um, travel, whatever, whatever, whatever. Use your photos to display who you are. In my case, you know, I might use a photo like this with my little hat, right? And my scarf and a big smile. Um, to show who I am. Peacocking, we've talked about that a little, little bit earlier. Um, using something that helps you stand out in a picture, right? It doesn't have to be a bikini, especially on a site full of nude or bikinied people. A nude or bikini photo is probably not going to necessarily make you stand out. Be arty, be interesting. Show pictures of you doing things that you like to do. There's a lot of different options there. Um, three. Prithee, tell me why I should give a shit. 
Here's the thing. When people online are looking at your profile, they don't care about you. In fact, nobody online cares about you until you give them a reason to. That's what your profile is for. Why should I give a shit about you? Are you interesting? Do you like to travel? Do you enjoy competitive chinchilla breeding? Painting with your toes? Like what makes you interesting that I should care about? Right? And even if you are on a kinky site, make that interesting beyond just kink because if you are connecting with another human, they want to connect with the human in you, not just the fetishes or the kinks. Right? Four. Verily, tell truthfully the story of your life. And by that, be honest, right? If you're going to meet somebody, if you're hoping you're going to meet somebody, lying about how tall you are, how skinny you are, or whatever, how much money you make, if you end up actually succeeding in getting a relationship out of this person, then what are you going to do? Huh? Tell the truth. You don't have to tell the whole truth. That's nobody's business. But what you do tell, tell the truth. Right? Be honest. Five. Nay, do not forget thy audience. What you're going to put in a profile on Fet Life versus Swinger Lifestyle versus Tinder versus OkCupid versus Match.com, radically different things. Know who you're speaking to, right? And speak to your audience. I often write my profile as if I'm speaking to one single person who is my perfect audience. I just imagine that person in front of me and I speak to them or who is my perfect audience for that. So one of the things that we're going to be doing in 2023 that I'm super duper excited about is on Dating Kinky, we're going to be doing fantasy posts. And the fantasy posts will be really interesting. They'll be kind of like Craigslist in that you can post your fantasy and people can respond. But here's the kicker. They will be anonymous, right? So you can post, you know, this is what I'm looking for and it will be anonymous. And if people respond, they will be connected to you via chat anonymously. You can connect and chit chat until both of you say, yeah, we're, we're open to being connected, you know, for real and seeing each other's names and profiles or until one of you is like, eh, this isn't working for me. Best of luck. Thank you. And goes away. Right. But here's the thing. Don't forget your audience. So when you're posting a fantasy, post to the person or the people that would be the type of people to fulfill that fantasy. If you're writing a profile post to the person or the people that would be the type of person to respond to who you are as a human that you want to meet, talk directly to them. Like I talk to you, I talk to my audience, you know? Kind of like the show Love is Blind, kind of like that, absolutely. Um, the idea being that if you can post things anonymously, it makes it easier. And we'll also set it up so that you can uh, disqualify certain people from being able to even see your ads. Like for example, let's say you're friendly with your ex and you don't wanna block them on Dating Kinky, but you also don't want them seeing 
your fantasy posts and accidentally responding to you and then getting to know them all over again, then finding out, ooh, ah, we've got a do you like pina coladas type of situation going on here. No, thank you, right? Mm. Oh, good gosh, that's delicious. Um, Cosmopolite says, except nobody's ob ob obligated to get engaged or married in a certain amount of time. Yeah, true that. Absolutely. That would be icky. Yeah. So keep your audience in mind. Who are you marketing yourself to? And this is true also, not just of the profile, but when you're talking in communications and conversation, who are you marketing yourself to? We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. Um, commandment the sixth. Pride thyself in thy spelling and grammar. Now, I do understand that perfect spelling and perfect grammar is elitist and inaccessible to all. That said, try cleaning it up a bit, right? Write so that people can understand you and so that people want to keep reading. Because if we spend as much time trying to figure out what you are trying to say as we are reading, it's going to be a challenge. Type up your profile in Microsoft Word or Pages first. Catch everything you can, read it out loud, and then post it. Um, number seven, prove thyself. This is a big one. Prove thyself. So a lot of people in profiles will often say things like, I am dominant. Derp, 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 derp. Right? Here's the thing. Anybody can say, I am to dominant, kneel before me. Nobody cares. But you can prove yourself by saying things like, as a dominant, I believe that, right? You don't have to say, I am a dominant. You don't have to say, I am funny. You don't have to say, um, I am uh successful prove it use photos to show you know don't say i love to travel use photos that show you in different places around the world and mention in your profile you know when i travel i love to have somebody with me who enjoys exploring things like um new food uh, new cities and exploring and hiking the countryside or whatever it is, right? Prove yourself. Don't just say, I am this. Be that in your profile. Cosmopolite says it's not that hard, people. And then that guy over there says it can be that hard. I also notice the more languages I try to learn, the worse my spelling and grammar become. So here's the key. Again, not looking for perfection. Just put in some effort, right? And here's, here's another thing. If you're not going to be perfect, don't worry about being perfect. If you read what I write, you're going to find that my grammar is very much exactly how I talk. I use commas too much and my editor hates me for it. I use ellipses too much. Um, I use capital letters to emphasize things in ways that editors really are not pleased with. It's readable though. And I'm talking to a person who will either enjoy my method of communicating or will not, right? Um, punctuation doesn't bite nor make your computer explode. Absolutely, 100%. And James says, it's perfectly okay to ask for grammar or spelling help from friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Cobalt has caught me. I am fluent. I both read and write Taiwanese. Um, so, yeah. 
I'm only talking about there versus there versus there. <laughs> yeah. And English native speakers, right? It's, it is, I mean, it's elitist, it's ableist, it's all sorts of things. And yet all I'm saying is do your best. Rather than dashing it off, if you know you have trouble, do your best. See if you can read what you wrote out loud two days later without preparing yourself. Just read it from start to finish. And if you stumble over words, eh, change those words, right? Okay. The eighth commandment, ask for the date. And not necessarily the date, but ask them to take some sort of action. If you enjoy this profile, shoot me a note. Let's get together for tea. Do you like hiking? I like to go hiking every Saturday with a group of people. Would you like to join us? Shoot me a note, right? Ask, I wrote on a profile once in, um, when I was traveling uh, for a cons consultation gig, I was in a new city for three months and I wrote, if you ask me out, I'll say yes. As long as you ask me out and tell me what it is that you're going to show me that you love about your city. Right? Ask for the date. Give them a reason to contact you. So again, these are the eight dating profile commandments from dating kinky, the book, the, uh, your best ever kinky profile workshop is coming out this month. It's currently available for plus members. It's coming out this month to be available for all dating kinky members. Everyone who has been a member and everybody who signs up to be a member going forward into the future, because I believe that by joining a kinky dating site, getting good tips on how to build a profile is valuable. So I made an entire workshop around these eight profile commandments and dating kinky. The book is also now at the same time that we release that going to be free for everyone who joins dating kinky in digital format. That's PDF, Mobi and EPUB, the three main digital formats. Plus members also get access to Dating Kinky, the book in um, audio format, so can listen to it. But there you go. Those are going to be gifts to you that are coming up because if you join Dating Kinky, my goal is to help you succeed, right? To build a profile. Now, here's the thing. Earlier, when I mentioned that a profile is important to connecting, um, Stephanie said, fill it out. Here's a hint. A profile that even tries to do those eight commandments. Even if it's not perfect, is going to be so many heads and shoulders above the competition like, it's going to be insane. Yeah. Stephanie says, I literally swipe left on empty profiles. Oh, 100%. If somebody does not have a profile, I don't care how good looking they are. I'm not going to interact with them because they've made very clear that they have no time to let me know who they are. I don't care about that. Right. Um, it also, oh, this is also another thing. Empty profiles. You know what an empty profile can often mean? It means that that person is waiting to see who they match with, and then they will customize their discussion to the profile they match with. So each person, there was a local person that matched with three of my girlfriends, and we all compared notes. And that profile pretended to be a different person for each three because the profile was very bare. People know this stuff. We recognize this stuff. If you're not willing to put it out there and tell people who you are, 
Mm, sus. Super, super sus. Oh, and let me tell you about Heinz. <clears throat> Heinz. So when I was um, a moderator being paid to do some um, moderation and consultation work on one of the big, big early dating sites for kinky people, um, I found this guy who, well, I assume it was a guy, um, whose first profile was a guy, but he ended up, and I counted them, 57 different profiles filled out men, women, trans, dominant, submissive, switch, um, different locations, different places, like different um, overall experiences, interests, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 57 different profiles. This person had been on that site since like the second year, right? And had built all these pro profiles. Every single one of them used the same password and the same IP address. 57. Okay. Here's the thing. I wasn't allowed to remove them. This person would get on the forums and post something as one of their profiles and then get on the forums as another profile and support it or argue against it and create entire conversations. Several of their profiles were well-respected and regarded in the online community is knowing what they're talking about, including two that were like mortal enemies of each other. I don't think he was plural co cobalt, and I'm going to tell you why. This person also used this profile to approach people with one of the profiles, get to know them, then when that didn't work out, would then switch to another profile approach them obliquely using information that they had gained in previous conversations about that person and would massage and work every new conversation and connection from a different profile to get deeper and deeper into this person's heart and mind. I was not allowed to delete that profile because the owners of the site said, yeah, people like that make the site look more busy. Yeah. So yes, being able to see activity history is nice. And I, I'll actually remind people of that I'm like, you know, what you're arguing with me right here, Everyone's going to see that on your profile. And I'm glad about that. So keep it coming, right? Keep telling me what a horrible attitude you have because on your profile, right? <laughs> Roger, wow, that's a lot of work. Yes, that's what I thought. And it's also gross. So profiles, I'm actually going to share with you as examples, some of my own profiles right here. Um, just so you get an idea. Now, I have actually been in my life um, complimented more times than I can count on how I write profiles. Now, I'm going to take this down and I'm going to share with you what those things actually say so you don't have to. You know. So two of those were my Tinder profile and my Bumble profiles right now. So um, Tinder, about me, I'm non-monogamous and I enjoy a myriad of interests. It has, because those profiles are so short, I used emojis to my benefit, right? So in this case, emoji, red shoe, high heel, dog, cat, earth, the little droplets that sex or orgasm, um, eight ball for pool, uh, ice skating, a plane for travel, mountains, beach, um, iPhone, uh, scales for justice, a couple of hearts, and then the Virgo sign, right? To let people know, a 
about. Um, and then I'm five foot six inches tall and curvy, 36C, 2942, a woman size 12, with a small waist and defined hips. I'm an author, publisher, and I run my own business. You are wicked smart, sexy, open-minded, adventurous, chivalrous, and looking for a connection to go with your friends with benefit fun. Books over TV, passion over games, cooking over fast food, depths over shallows, meeting over chatting, smiling over frowning. Right? We only have so much space. <laughs> James, <laughs> this was old school, old school um, online stuff. This was years and years and years ago. So Bumble has a little less space. So I still say I enjoy a myriad of interest. I still use the emojis. I still um, describe myself and say I'm an author publisher and I run my own business. I say I'm non-mono and kinky. Friends call me Nuki. I enjoy spontaneity and brains. FWB is friend first, right? Getting the point across, saying exactly who I am and speaking to exactly who I want to read me. Let's do another one. This one is, um, I showed uh, the top of my FET profile in that. Um, but the bulk of it says, I'm a, he and this is my FET profile. I'm a hedonistic, dominant, cuckoldress, pimpress who is polyamorous and monoromantic. I enjoy making connections and I am open to new player sex partners if the connection is right. I tend to swoon over conversation, respect, flirting, and a sense of humor. Bring that with you in your first message and you just might get somewhere. Then I have a section for my links and stuff. And then I say, now on to the details. And this is where I, I try to show my attitude and my personality. I like them big. Big brains are a must. Big heart is important as well. I love big dogs. A big personality is a check for me and for you. Big hopes, dreams, and goals. I know I have them. Let's see about me. I'm a 38C. 30, 43, about a size 12. I'm curvy and many think I have a nice figure. I'm quirky, fun, and open. I'm also honest even when it sucks. I'm not shy about sexuality, but I'm not an easy fuck. If you're simply looking for panties to get into, move on. I'm not a submissive, but don't call me goddess either. Nookie is fine or Miss Nookie if you prefer to use an honorific. I collaborate well with dominant personalities and clash with domineering ones. I have an amazing partner and a fantastic group of kinky folk I love and who love me. I'm not really looking for more. If the connection is right, I'm open to possibilities. I specifically tend to be open to new bullfriends since my partner enjoy and I enjoy a cuckolding dynamic or just interesting people without expectations beyond good company. Hmm, what else? I'm sure I don't know. If you decide to message me, please include a note about what inspired you, aside from my photos, so I can know you bothered to read this. Also, feel free to ask me what you will. I'm happy to answer and look forward to making more friends. That's my FetLife profile. And then, one last one. This is from an old, old, old Craigslist ad because RIP Craigslist personals. I'm super smart and interested in your mind as much as your body. I'm good at sex and sexuality, and I believe there's more to a successful encounter than a grab for the genitals. I am polyamorous. I'm also very selective. I am bisexual, feminine, and driven. I prefer my sex with a side of connection and a hint, sometimes more, of kink. I'm moderately attractive. Some think I'm beautiful. I'm curvy, a US size eight to 10. I'm a woman who likes to take charge. What does this mean to you? It means you can be yourself, strong, capable, loving, aggressive, successful, and you can be mine, 100% devoted and rewarded for it with deep intimacy, powerful love, and amazing sex. Right? Write your profile like you're talking to the person that you want to connect with. And... If you're reading a profile, I'm gonna put this back up on the screen real quick. If you're reading a profile, 
like this one right here, my FetLife profile, notice where it says looking for friendship and events. It doesn't say looking for a lover. It doesn't say looking for a submissive. It says looking for friendship and events. And then in the written part, I tell you exactly who I could potentially be looking for outside of that. Anybody who cannot speak to me of exactly what is in that profile and tell me why I should give a shit about them when they write me the first message disqualifies themselves. Which brings me to the next critical thing. The first message. Yeah. Now let's real quick. I'm going to catch up on chat here. Uh, Carlos says, would you ever consider doing a college student? Eh. I mean, I'm not against it, but I tend to like people who are a little bit older with more experience and more mature, but that doesn't negate college experience. Um, college students, it just means you have to be not average, I guess. Uh, Carlos says, I love Bumble. I'm in college myself, and most of the times older girls will actually start conversations. Tinder mostly leads nowhere, no matter the age. Oh, that's 100%. Allie says, I've always had a difficult time writing profiles because of being socially awkward, both online and in person. So here's the thing. Um, if you follow the uh, profile workshop or the... Um, exercises that I put together in Dating Kinky, the book, I will actually walk you through writing your profile and figuring out what to put in there and why it's important and how to speak it. Um, some things to note, like when I post my uh, measurements, I post them and I very specifically say, I'm curvy. Some people find that beautiful. I've said, my ideal lover will also find that beautiful and be attracted to it like a mouse to cheese, right? I put that out there. I am a curvy person. I am not a stick. Um, and if that's what you're looking for, it's not going to be me, right? I also say things like, I don't run. If you're looking for a running partner, that's not me. I can hike for hours on end, though. So if you enjoy getting out in the mountains and hiking at a realistic pace, I'm your girl, right? These are things that you can learn to put into a profile by simply deciding what's important to you. And then every single one of my profiles is an iteration of something before and who I am now versus who I might have been the first time I wrote that profile. So... Um, I see you didn't mention age ranges. Should that be important? For some people. For me, it's not critical. It's I connect with humans. Whether or not I'm going to have sex with them, whether or not I'm going to date them, I connect with humans. And I see where the human goes. And then from there, we decide what level of relationship there's going to be if any. <clears throat> now, for some people, like for example, people who have children, which I never did, um, will often say, I will not date anybody who is um, my child's age or younger, or even within five years, right? So if their kid is 22, 27 is the lowest cutoff for them. That's 100% fair. That's a preference. Good for them. But I don't really discriminate based on any of that. So that's me. If that's important, though, it should be in there. Right? Okay. So the first message. The first message is critically important. And I have a post, and I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna share the link with you. Um, I'm gonna share the YouTube link with you. And um, for those of you who are right now on uh, the Dating Kinky YouTube, you can find it there. <coughs> Pardon me. Let me pop that right up. 
it's called the first message. And it goes through all the parts of the first message. Um, and I'll include the link to the blog here in the chat. Um, and it includes an actual template for the first message that you can use. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. So a first message should include the following elements, introduction, hello, I'm so-and-so, right? Interest, you caught my eye because you'd said something about, um, competitive smoke ring blowing. And I find that fascinating. Are you willing to share more about like how you got into competitive smoke, smoke ring blowing? That's your interest right there. Respect, um, calling them by their screen name, for example, as opposed to, hey, sweetie, or hello, mistress, or hello, dominant, or whatever it is, call them by their screen name and be polite consider it. Um, offer a potential connection. I would love to get to know you more. Um, I find you fascinating and, you know, hope that you'll respond and we can, you know, start a conversation and an invitation. So invitation is, you know, give them a subtle or not so subtle invitation to respond. So who are you? State your interest. Be considerate of who you're writing to. Mention something you have you have in common or an interest that you might share. Um, and then invite them to write back to you. Right? First message. So let me give you an example. There we go. Um, good morning, username. I was perusing your profile and I find you fascinating and frankly, amazingly attractive. I was particularly interested in your statement about hedgehog racing since I've had an interest in that area for years and I've always wanted to learn more. What got you into that? Oh, and pardon my enthusiasm. I'm username or preferred name and I'm ever so happy to make your acquaintance. Is there a name or title besides username that you prefer? Have a fantastic day, username or preferred name signature. Right? Allie, good point. Anyone who messages me with a pet name or honorific immediately gets a message deleted or rejected. 100%. I actually have, I'll put this up on the screen. I actually have a macro that's called DCM, don't call me. Please don't call me, fill in the blank. I don't own you, so I prefer not to be titled by you. Please call me Nookie or Miss Nookie if you must use an honorific. Thank you. Right? I'll send that through. Yeah. So the basic first message template can be used over and over and over again. It's a really simple template. Greeting of some kind, username. I saw your profile. I came across your profile. I was reading your profile and I indicate an interest without sexual overtones. Leave sex out of the first message. And I was particularly interested in or what really caught my eye or, you know, here's a question I have for you. Start a conversation for them to respond to. Introduce yourself. Is there a name or title besides username you prefer? Have a wonderful day. Hope to hear from you soon. Whatever sort of sign off and then your name. It's that simple. Read the profile. Fill it out. First message. And I will guarantee you. If you use that template, your success rate will go up. You know why? Because getting a good first message, just a basically good first message that shows that you read their profile is so rare today. So rare. Like all you have to do is be considerate and slightly interested in the actual human and you'll probably get a response back. It's that simple. So that YouTube link that I put in the chat there will take you to the first message um, video and there's the first message blog, making the first message. Now, conversational skills. 
I have a lot to say on these topics, so I tend to run over, but I'm going to hurry this up a bit. But here's the thing. Conversational skills. Ugh. This is the hardest because who wants to have conversation? Uh, that's a trick question. Everyone who actually wants to connect with other humans wants to have conversations. And frankly, that's where a lot of people fail. Even those who might otherwise get some of that good old no strings attached sex. They fail because they can't have basic conversation. My girlfriends and I talk about this. Like even when we're looking for like fun sex and somebody can't have a basic conversation without like throwing in really stupidly easy to fix like mistakes. We call that taking their out of my mouth. Like all they had to do was have a basic conversation and show us that they were a safe person to spend time with and maybe a little bit of fun. But instead, they were this close and they just took it away all by themselves. Right? And this has happened to all genders. I know guys that will have these like conversations with women and the women will just be, you know, going right along. But then all of a sudden the woman will be like, well, now that we've met, you know, could we get another date or did it, did it, did it. And all of a sudden, like it's respond to me, respond to me, respond to me, pay me attention, pay me attention, pay me attention. And they don't wait. And if there's like a day in between texts, all of a sudden they're like, oh, why aren't you responding to me? Why aren't you paying me attention? Here, look at this, do this, da, 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 da. And it gets just overwhelmingly bad. Conversation. There are important reasons for conversation. Um, in communities, it's the only way you're gonna get noticed right? Because you're in there posting in a community with other people and there are no profiles. And if all you put in is photos, well, people don't really connect just through photos. In one-to-one -one conversations, you're sussing each other out. It's about getting to know each other well enough to either end the dialogue or to take it to another level, right? So a conversation that gets us to, hey, I've realized we're not a match, best of luck to you, is still successful in my book because you've learned something. A conversation that leads to another level, like exploring an anonymous fantasy, meeting for NSA sex, connecting for a drink, cybering or sexting, sharing nudes, a first date, or saying hello to each other, planning to say hello to each other at an event. All of those would be successful too. So what are the deadly sins of conversation when you're trying to connect with other kinky people online, either one-on-one -on -one or in a community atmosphere like Discord or FetLife groups or Facebook groups or whatever. Here are the deadly sins of conversation. Impatience, not being able to stand when they don't respond immediately. I have literally had people write me one message, the very first message, another message, sort of like checking in, another message saying, huh, why aren't you responding? And then another two or three messages getting angrier and angrier that I'm not paying them any attention between the time that I signed on to FetLife one morning and the time I checked my messages the next morning. Full circle, all because they couldn't wait for me to respond to that first message. Now, what this is actually is the second deadly sin of conversation, entitlement. They felt entitled to my time. They invested themselves too much in a complete stranger on the internet responding to them. What if I was out of town, right? Why would they assume that I'm pointedly ignoring them versus I'm not at my computer and maybe I'll get back to them when I get back to my computer. 
right? They feel entitled to a response, not just a response, but on their timetable. Third deadly sin, unsolicited and without consent goodie bits. And yes, I do mean that even if you met on a sex site, even if your profile is your goodie bits, don't send goodie bits one to one or don't bombard a chat with your goodie bits until it's appropriate. So for example, in um, the Mingler, we have an NSFW channel. We had one person who would go in there and every single day, three times a day would post their goodie bits. Send them a message like, eh, how about participating in the conversation and dialing back the goodie bits a little bit so that you flow better, right? They did. They did. They started participating in the conversation. They dialed back the goodie bits to once every three days. Golden, right? Another thing that we do in the Mingler is we have themes. Like if it's your birthday, you get to pick a theme for the day. People have done like waterfalls or rope or the color red or bite marks or whatever it is. Um, some people, one person did O faces, which was really hilarious. So watch for that. And if a topic comes up that you can participate in, choose a photo that, or take a photo that allows you to participate. If you're going to, if you're wanting to send a picture of your goodie bits, to somebody else, to your potential kinky dream boopsie, right? Get consent. So on Dating Kinky, if you start to send a photo to somebody the first time in conversation with them that you send an attachment, it will say, who, oh, wait, hold on, do you have consent? And then you either say yes or no. So the person on the other side knows that you were asked that question and that you either did get consent from them or not. And that tells them how you feel about consent, right? Just don't do it. It's so easy. If somebody wants to see your junk and you think they want to see your junk, just ask them, right? So simple. And if they say no, be thankful you didn't send it without asking. You see how to turn this around and make it positive. And I'm talking to all genders. I am not just talking about unsolicited dick pictures here. I am not all genders. Number four, deadly sin of conversation, interrogations. Asking question after question after question after question and not following up on the answers you've gotten and not answering any of your own damn questions. I get that, like I get that a lot where somebody will be like, so what do you do for a living? Oh, that's interesting. So, you know, what's your favorite color? What music do you like? What book are you reading right now? Tell me more about this. Like, I can't have this conversation. This is an interrogation. This is not give and take. I'm not here for this. It's not entertaining for me. Um, five, making the other person do all the work. So I'll get this a lot, like, hey, and I'll say, hello, and they'll say, how are you? I'll say, fine. And they'll say, tell me about yourself. First of all, first of all, I have a profile. And on FetLife, where I get these conversations a lot, I have over 1,700 readings. Tell me about yourself. No, you are writing to me. It is up to you to engage with me in conversation. It's a back and forth. It's like a tennis game. If one person keeps the ball all the time, it's not a game anymore, right? Number six, in online communities, in um, groups online, Facebook groups, FetLife groups, uh, Discord, responding to everything, trying to insert yourself in every conversation. Don't do that. It's like a game of double dutch, right? Wait, wait. Oh, there's a topic I'm passionate about. 
I can jump in and talk about it, right? You don't have to be a part of every single conversation. Um, seven, number seven, deadly sin, making everything about sex, always joking about sex, always referring to sex, always going hard, 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 sex, 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 even on a sex site, don't do it. Right. Number eight, assumptions, assuming that a person is going to be this way or that way. Ask questions instead. And again, don't make it an interrogation. Just say, hey, I notice you like X, Y, Z. Do you also enjoy A, B, C? Right? Number nine, deadly sin. Instead of being authentic, you try to be smooth. Smooth comes across as inauthentic almost every time just a fact. Uh, number 10, this is a huge one. Negativity. Negativity. Huge. Also, within that realm of negativity, treating the other person in the conversation as if they are their gender or their role instead of an individual human, because you've had bad experiences with that, right? Treat them like a person instead of like, Ah, uh, you're a woman. You you've got to say that, or um, well, you know, dominant women are all like that, or whatever it is. If you can't be positive and treat people like individuals, don't date right now. Don't try to connect right now. Get your baggage taken care of, because that's going to ruin your chances with potentially amazing people. Number 11, boring. Hi. Hi. Or WYD, what you doing? Nothing that I want to stop and answer you, right? DTF? No. Yeah. Not with you. Number 12, using the fact that you're online or on a dating site or on a kinky app as an excuse to behave in ways that you would not behave offline, in person, face to face. Yes, you know better. And that includes things like making promises that you're not willing to fulfill if you meet face to face. Seriously. Don't if it's if it's not something that you would walk up to somebody in a Starbucks and say, why would you say it to a complete stranger online? Until you've gotten to know them and you know that that kind of talk is welcome. Right. Celine says smooth equals oily feeling. Yeah, often. Mm -hmm. And the 13, and this goes back to what we were talking about with attitude, talking with people you only want to bone. Right. Um, always, always, always follow the guidelines or rules for the forum or discord or site or whatever you're on or in always. If you are in a private community, follow their rules. They're there for a reason and the community culture will demand it of you. If those rules are not a fit for you, better to find a space that does not have those rules than to break them because the community has a long memory of people being bonehead, right? If you're a bonehead, people are going to remember it. And if you break a rule and somebody has to talk to you about it, apologize, fix it, move on, either in the community or simply live the leave the community. If it's not a good fit for you, leave. Burned bridges take a long time to rebuild. What's funny, ironic, or sad is that mostly the way to stand out from a crowd 
in online dating apps, communities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is to be an authentic human being with passions and quirks and personality of your own to authentically engage with other people in friendly ways and to show your personality. The way many of you can do offline. Online is no different. I don't know why people think it is. I'm exactly the same person online that I was offline ever. Anybody who knows me online knows me offline in the same way and vice versa. I'm exactly who I am. Now, that said, um, was it Cosmopolite, I think, said online is a great way to practice boundary setting. Yes, absolutely. Don't be afraid to experiment a bit online with who you are and how you react to people. It's definitely worth it. And sometimes it's a little bit more fun to come a little bit out of your shell online. Um, like for example, in our NSFW community in the Mingler, um, the only people who can access that community are people who are local and who one of the hosts, at least one of the hosts knows by sight and would invite to a party at their home. So everybody in that channel is a real person who is known offline in person, right? And that gives people a little bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, courage maybe to sometimes try out sexy pictures that they might not otherwise have the bravery to try. You can use online for these things and don't fear it. KS, good to see you. I try to be as creative as possible. Absolutely be creative, but not at the expense of authenticity. This is key. Creativity is lovely only if it's truthful and authentic, right? Don't be creative just for the sake of creativity, right? So as I said, we have some amazing gifts coming up for plus members and for um, free members. And that's going to be, we've got an entirely new online community for our free members. Our plus members are experiencing that online community right now. The free members though, are about to get access to this online community that gives them um, Dating Kinky, the book in digital format and the Your Best Ever Profile Workshop. Plus members have access to the Your Best Ever Profile Workshop right now. So um, that plus, you know, these kinkmas presentations are part of my gift and Dating Kinky's gift to you, to all of you, those who are watching me live, those who are here for the replay. Um, the next event, <laughs> Y'all are going to love this one tomorrow at 7 a.m. Eastern. I wanted to put something in there that allows us to um, be there for our Australian friends, for example. And I'm going to be talking about the no regrets lifestyle. I'm going to be revisiting that conversation. So if you can make it to that, that's a good one. And then tomorrow at 2 p.m., I'm going to be talking about contracts for power exchange lifestyles. So if you love this presentation, if you loved the gift that I'm giving you with this presentation and you're enjoying the series, um, and I hope you did, um, I would love to, and some of you already know this drill, I would love to invite you to join Dating Kinky's Plus membership. It's at getplus.datingkinky.com. You'll get access to over 400 webinar replays just like this one um, in video and audio format. Oh, hey, Ava, that's just for you, actually. <laughs> um, in video and audio format, 
You get access to all of my books, some of them in audio format as well. You get access to workshops. You get access to special VIP status. We've got some amazing plus member only socials that are coming up, um, all as part of Dating Kinky Plus membership. So I do hope that you will consider joining us. It's $9.99 a month. That helps us support the free education that we do and to build the apps better. Um, it also gives you some amazing features on the dating app, like video and audio chat, group chat, save searches, and so on. And those features are only going to grow. Super excited about what we've got in store for that. So please, please do, do join us, do consider it. Um, if you have the ability, joining for the full year is $74.99. That's a 40% discount. And um, it's definitely worth it. I would love to have you in there and um, seeing all of the amazing things you can learn and do with your uh, kinky life. So, yes. Thank you to each and every one of you who have uh, joined me today for this hour and a little more. Uh, James asks, hold on. James asks, where do we access the profile workshop? So if you are a member of Dating Kinky, whether you are a plus member or a free member, um, sometime within the next month, you're gonna have access to a new Dating Kinky member community section um, that's separate from the app and we'll have access to a bunch of samples of content from the plus member section. If you are a plus member, you can access it in the plus member uh, Love, Sex, Romance, Kink library that is available right now. Um, it's just, it's coming up within the next month. We're finishing up a couple of uh, things in the app and then we're going to let every member of Dating Kinky know how to access the new community and how to um, take advantage of these new features that we've got coming up. So super, super excited about that. Um, so if you are just, uh, if you're not yet a plus member um, and you're a free member, just keep an eye eye out. We will let you know in the app. We will let you know um, by message. We will get the point out to you so that you have access to this new content that we're making available for everybody on Dating Kinky. Because again, I would love a kinky dating app where people create their best kinky dating profiles ever. And they're learning the skills they need to make the connections that they want to make. That's key for me. That's what I want for every single one of you. So, um, Allie, thank you, Nookie. Wonderful and informative as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you again for joining me this afternoon. I will see some of you bright and early tomorrow at 7 a.m. for our um, No Regrets. And then in the afternoon for contracts for power exchange lifestyles. And um, thank you for taking this time for yourself and uh, putting in the self-development, the growth and the learning time for you to um, really make that investment. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you happen to be.